Hey folks, welcome to MEIOU and Taxes playthrough. Uh, I am your host, Exiled Tyrant, and I'm going to be playing uh, this mod MEIOU uh, for Europa Universalis 4, which is a grand strategy game from Paradox Interactive. And it came out about August of 2013, and what was. Yeah, I think it was August, but. Uh, anyway, today I'm going to be playing as Sweden, and just kind of as a run-through, for those of you who are unaware or haven't heard much about this game, uh, basically it goes from, the base game goes from about um, 1400 or so, 1440, I think it is, 1446, uh, till 1826, I think is what the base game I'm going to be playing this mod which increases the timeline from 1356 to, let me just see what's the latest, add some dates onto that, and the latest day that I can start is 1856. So it's a pretty big stretch of country that existed in between 1356 and 1856 I could play as. I could play as, for example, uh, one of the many warring states in Japan and fight to unify the country. Uh, I could play as one of the Indian states, do the same thing. Uh, fight as England or France in the Hundred Years' War. Castile or Portugal and have a colonial empire. But uh, today, I'm going to be playing as Sweden. I've never actually really played much as uh, Sweden, and I'd like to have a little bit more of a continental Europe kind of play. Um, most of the time when I play this game, I play as England, uh, Castile, or France. So even with France, even though it's quite a large continental power, I find myself paying a lot of attention to the colonies um, and really more focused just in this Western European chunk, not so much in the entire continent. Uh, where Sweden, I think that I'm going to be... What My, my long-term goal for this is that I would like to unify all of Scandinavia under Swedish control, uh, possibly push into the Baltic uh, states region, but I'm not sure. But we'll start it out as Sweden. I'm going to be playing with no bonuses, normal difficulty, and I want to keep historical lucky nations. It just it seems to uh, make the game perform a little bit more quote-unquote historical. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's start this game up. So here we are. We start as. Oh, forgot this mod has some issues with that. Ambient sound, some reason. It's a little buggy with this mod. I think that's something that they'll end up ironing out. But anyway, uh, so Sweden starts in kind of a little bit of a tenuous position. We actually technically own uh, Sverige or uh, Finland, but our character, our king, uh, that is, uh, King Magnus has a rebellion going on, and the rebelling party is Eric, Magnus' son, being our son. And what's basically going on is it's... Uh, Magnus thinks that he should be the king of Sweden, so he has gained support in Finland to try and overthrow us. So, what we are going to do in this is I'm going to start by hiring ourselves a general, placing him in charge of the Royal Swedish Army. I'm going to move my fleet out into the Baltic because we need to start dealing with this Finnish army, these upstarts. So currently I'm going to make my objective uh, increase, or my mission to increase prestige. It's a pretty easy mission. Um, uh, we're not really making enough money for me to be having an advisor at the moment, so I won't bother with that. Gotland, eh, troublesome Gotland. But anyway, let's start this playthrough. A cool thing about this mod is that it generally just kind of adds some depth to uh, a lot of things. There you go. So I'll just pause it. So uh, MEIOU, basically it's a kind of a compilation mod of a lot of uh, really cool mods that fix things. For example, uh, it adds, I think it's now 40 or so states, maybe it's 35, somewhere in there. Uh, countries and powers that are in Italy. So that alone, that mod is 
fantastic. And it adds, like the last picture said, about 300 provinces. Like you can see how Germany is now just this uh, this checkerboard, like just kind of a mess. And that's how it should be. It's a good way. It, it more accurately represents Germany at this time. Sweden, kind of a nice little just blob. I like that. Don't have to worry about too many other powers. It's just about, it's basically just Norway, Finland, Denmark, and the Teutonic Order. So, anyway, let's... Are the Danes in this? Yes, they are. I forgot about that. Uh, I'm not going to really play as play with too much about this. I don't like to do too much of the religious uh, interworkings of this mod. I like it, but I, I just don't really enjoy it. And I um, don't really enjoy playing with it, that is. The Teutonic Order is a good out that alliance for me to have at the moment. I don't mind the Teutons. They tend to not necessarily betray me, but I always seem to get into odds with them. Sorry, Scotland. You're going to have to find somebody else to help you. England is just not worth fighting. Um, so what I'm... Oh, wow, I have free merchants. Uh, Stockholm. What about... Let's just go trade map. I'm definitely... Oh, it's out of our range. Hmm. Did not think that our range would be as small as it is. Well, I'm just going to leave our merchants then for now. Our trade range gets a little bit higher, then I'll send them to Novgorod and Moscow, and we'll pull the trade forward to Stockholm. Our all trade rightfully belongs. So let's just start occupying uh, just the southern tip. It's actually currently Denmark, if I remember correctly. But we're going to just try my best to operate and re-secure my southern territories from that rebellious son of mine. I'm going to build a few more units because it's not really that I'm losing and quite honestly the Swedish or the Finnish army, pardon me, isn't very large. It's only a few thousand men, but just in the interest of speeding this up. Superintendents. What does that give me? Hmm. I think I need to read a little bit more on this mod if I don't know what the superintendents does. So anyway, um, let's just keep on going through this. It's a little bit of the annoying part about wars in general in this game is that it's a lot of waiting. I am going to take off my autosave a little bit. Uh, yearly. That's ah, fine. We'll keep that. Where is he going? Scan? Oh. Too fast. Go help them. Oh shit. Damn it. Well, that, uh, that was slightly embarrassing. Positive note. This army's done. Let's trap them on that island. There we go. That's 3,000 men that will not be able to fight until they can beat me. That is not going to happen anytime soon. Alright. Uh, let's just bring this around. Big wide move. Let's see what I can get. Because I'd like to have a little bit of... I'd like to play a little bit of the Papal game. Because it uh, its benefits are definitely there. The trade efficiency is not doing so well. But that's fine. We'll have to deal with that later. Yeah, as you can see, like the the benefit of having more diplomats is really good. Um, mostly just because then you can at least start paying, or not paying, uh, building up alliances and things like that. Norway, I really don't mind fighting. But Norway, and Denmark is my enemies, and Novgorod, because I'm gonna. Ultimately, I'd like to take these two completely out. And Novgorod's going to be my enemy pretty much up until it becomes Russia, and then Russia will be my enemy. So let's see if this 4,000 strong can do this. Push them out of small land, God willing, into 
one of these neighboring territories. Too damaged from that, too much morale was lost. Oh well, we'll recover soon enough. Now who's somebody I'd like to get into a relationship with? I'm trying to think about an alliance that I'd like to end up brokering. Who's the current emperor? It's Bohemia, go figure. Um, do I really want I'm going to end up wanting to take some imperial land, probably along the coast. Mostly Danzig is the big one that I want to grab. Oh, right there. There's Danzig. It's actually a separate territory. That's good. Um, so I think, would they take a royal marriage? No. An alliance? Also no. Probably just because of the war. We'll be able to solve that soon enough. God damn it, Denmark. I didn't say you could occupy that shit. I didn't say you could occupy that. Natives are not assisting. That's lovely. I'm just gonna have to quarantine. There's a lot of events, um, a lot of small events that actually really impact you quite a bit. I'm just gonna. There we go. Loans, loans, the magical thing that ruins countries. Who's this? Why is Bremen in this war? Hmm. I would not have thought that Bremen would actually be that bothered by this, but okay. Go figure. <laughs> Was at war. Apparently, they still hold a grudge. That's fine. Let's go... Since that's... Oh, they can actually siege it, but I don't really have a problem with losing that. I really just need to... Um, I had read on uh, on the forums that basically once I beat uh, Finland, I shouldn't actually try and take anything. Because it'll just cost me diplomatic power, and the event is, once I win the civil war, it'll reunify the kingdom. So there's no real point for me uh, doing anything too aggressive against fins. What do you take? You gonna give me some of this? I don't need any of the land. I can keep the land. And I would like the money, but I don't really like the inflation that goes with it. Now the question is, do I give this back to Denmark at the end of the war? Mm. Ah, let's end this war. The war's not a very... It's not a costly war for me, and I don't really have a problem. There we go. If we lose it, go back home. All right. Okay, let's pause this just for a second. Uh, so men and women who felt a special calling gave up their secular lives and devoted themselves to the fi their faith. Bleh. Can't even talk. There were many different types of monks, but during the Renaissance, most belonged to four orders. The Augustinian monks farmed and devoted themselves to charity. The Cistercian monks sought contemplation of God through splendid isolation on their monasteries in which they b produced everything they needed. Dominican friars traveled the land seeking out blasphemy and heresy, and Franciscan friars deliberately surrounded themselves by poverty in order to help, them so help others and preach repentance. Over time, some of these groups fell into decline, either due to theological division, or losing their purpose of uh, losing their sense of purpose, or losing or a lack of royal support. So, we are given the option to support different orders or monasteries, and the benefits are pretty good for some of them. Like this is good for the the Cistercians are pretty good because they give me a 10% uh, goods production bonus to most of my country. Um, but I lose a bit of my manpower, which as Sweden, I only have ten or 12,000. Uh, it's not really something that I'd like to give up, quite frankly. And this same thing, the Franciscans, not really interested. All of them actually give 5%, but this one is to the local manpower. These are just local manpowers of one province. The Cistercians are all across the country. So I think what I'm going to do is 
just help the uh, the Augustinians because they'll give me the production there, and it is that the shortest. No, they all last the same. Well, let's go with the Augustinian ones then. Good old Saint Augustine. Bring my fleet back to Upland. Withdraw the army back to Upland. Pomerania. Uh, I see problems between you and the Teutonic Orders, Pomerania. I'm sorry. <coughs> Can't really take that. Cool. I wish it was in the main game. Is this Terra Incognita that makes it look like an old map? Absolutely love this mod. Uh, even better Terra Incognita is what I think this version of the map is called. Well, that's neat. I didn't even know that. The the because uh, the the world starts relatively unpainted for most of um, most of Eu the Europeans. The uh, Portuguese, I think, generally are the ones that get out there first. Um, but anyway, it's kind of neat. I thought that the uh, the Swedes have knowledge of the uh, coast of Newfoundland and Greenland, so I thought that that'd be that's quite an interesting thing. Probably referencing to the uh, Viking sailors that made it there. Now I'm waiting for this event because I'm hoping that I didn't have to do something like really, really horribly beat them, but I'm really kind of worried about this. Oh well, I can fight them again for stuff because I have claim on all of it. It's all cores. Could I win in a war against Norway? That is the question. I don't have any allies, and I'm not going to call in any of mine. <laughs> Declaring war on a fellow Catholic is a sin, but a common one. So it doesn't give us any, any downsides for that. Thank God. Well, let's go to it. We have the manpower. We have the money. I probably should pay off those loans soon, but with the money that I can gain from beating the Norse, or the Norwegians, pardon me. Don't run. Man, they're fast. I'm hoping that there's no river crossing penalty between these two, but yeah, there was. Just from this river right here. And the map is absolutely stunning. This mod actually, I think that they redid the map, which is lovely. They added things like this, White Cliffs of Dover. Anyway, let's chase after these. Is this in the... No, that isn't. So I don't really want to... The Norse have a bit larger... The Norse. I keep saying that. The Norwegians have bigger ships. Um, better designed for the open sea. And I have primarily galleys and transports. So I will not be doing that. That would just be silly to go out into the open sea with a galley. The Pope is having some new events, because we have a new pope. And if I remember correctly, it's... Oh, Alsace. I thought it was Austria that was controlling. But, no matter. We don't care for their trifling little bits. This is a beautiful map. This Norwegian fjord system. Why would they attack that? In what world does that work? 1,000 against 3. Without even, even without the crossing bonus, they'd still have had a problem with that. This is a really neat feature. It's, um, it's not in any of the other Paradox games. I don't think the uh, Napoleonic War simulation. Oh, are they going around? They are. Cheeky prawn. No crossing bonus to help me. That's fine. 5,000 men will help me. Haha. -ha. Nope, not quite. Let's just bring in some more troops so we don't lose more than we need to. That does a little bit better. There we go. Reunify this army. 